Welcome. Psalm 69. Now, the Hayward family ministry is not a substitute for church. I know churches are closed during coronavirus. This is for extra. This is to help you to grow, help you get saved. By no means are we doing this so you can say, I don't have to go to church. Or I'm going to do the Hayward ministry and, and replace of church. Now, there's no church within 50 miles of where you're at. Okay, let us be to help. But if there's a King James Bible-believing church, Christ-centered, get there. Become a member of that church and grow with that church. But this is my family. I, I train my family. And we put it on video for others to learn the Bible also. And we're looking at Psalm 69 as we go chapter by chapter through the Bible. Some chapters will take a while. Like when we get to Psalm 119, we're not going to do that in one night. So Psalm 69 to the chief musician upon Shoshanan. A Psalm of David. We're going to look at the first advent of Jesus Christ. And we're going to look at the fact is that Jesus Christ was hated. Despised and rejected according to Isaiah 53. And anybody comes up to you, oh, everybody loves Jesus. You look them dead in the face and say, you've never read your Bible. You've never studied your Bible. I have. Save me. That's a great start. Isn't that what Peter cried out? Save me, Lord, when he's sinking. Save me, O God, for the waters are come in unto my soul. Death. As you'll find in Pilgrim's Progress, as, as Christian comes to the end, and I think it's faithful. It, it, both of them come to the, they come to the waters. And they gotta go through the waters to get to the heavenly city. I sink in deep mire. Jeremiah. Where there is no standing. Jeremiah. I am come into the deep waters where floods overflow me. And is it not Ezekiel, when he's described, he went out and it was up to his ankles, it was up to his knees, and it was up to uh, his thigh, and then it was waters he couldn't pass over. I am weary of my crying. Forgive me, sometimes I've marked my Bible so much, sometimes I don't see the words. My throat is dry. There's been so much tears and heartache. There's no fluid in the mouth. It's all going to the eyes. I don't know if it's connected. I know there's an ear, nose, throat doctor, but the eyes are different, but that's agony. My eyes fail while I wait for my God. What's wrong with the eye? I mean, is he looking upon God? That's not the case. I've got so much tears. My, my eyes are just so stinging with the salt. But my tears, they're just so red and they're just so cluttered and I, I can't see. And I'm in so despair, I just can't see. Spiritually and physically. Here comes Jesus. They that hate me without a cause. Psalm 35, 19 and John 15, 25. How dare you go about saying everybody loves Jesus? When the Bible says, why did they give him the cross? Why did they cry out, crucify him? If all the world loves Jesus. Are more than the hairs of my head. And again, I told you tonight, there's something about that hair. Something about that hair in the Bible. There are a lot of hairs on Jesus' head. I'm not saying he had long hair. But there were a lot of hairs on Jesus' head. 
And Jesus said that God knows how many they were. God knew exactly, according to this verse and what he said, God knew exactly how many people hated him. And there were more than the hairs of his head. That's a lot of people. Of the government, of the priests, and of the people. He came unto his own, his own, what? Received them not. How dare you say everybody loves Jesus? Oh, you may love a Jesus that Paul says is another Jesus. Paul says there's another Jesus. Maybe others love him. Maybe others love the tutti fruity, cootie, goody, sugary Jesus. That ain't the Jesus of the Bible. No way. They that would destroy me. How would they destroy him? Nail him to the cross. One time they took up stone to throw at him. One time they took him to a brow of a hill and they were going to cast him up. Asunder. Being my enemies wrongfully. What's wrongfully? What did Jesus ever do that was wrong? Listen, I've got people that hate me or don't like me because in years past or present, I've done them wrong. And I've not be able to make that wrong right. Sometimes, sometimes, I mean, isn't there somebody who is mad at you and you can look back and say, okay, I understand why they're mad at me. Something I did, something I said, something I didn't do. But what did Jesus do that was wrong? Where were the people that had leprosy at the cross that he healed? What were the people who were blind that could see, could find their way to the cross? Where were those that were deaf and could come to the cross and hear, it is finished? They said that, that the Sanhedrin gathered people to, to, to cast false witnesses against Jesus. And they had so many of them that they couldn't even agree with each other. You mean to tell me there was a line of people that were going to falsely charge Jesus. Then there's more of a line of people trying to get toilet paper today. Are mighty. The government was against Jesus. The, the priests that God set up over to Israel were against him. Then I restored that which I took not away. Oh God. That's a cry. Oh God. Serious. Not OMG. Oh God. Thou knowest my foolishness. Now this is not Jesus. And my sins are not hid from thee. Get that. No one sees me doing it. My pastor don't know. My spouse don't know. My children don't know. Behold, the eyes of the Lord are in every place. Behold, the evil and the good. And those the evils first. We're prone to do evil more than we are to do good. Let not them that wait on thee, O Lord God of hosts, be ashamed. Those who are with God, those who love God, please don't make us be ashamed. And there's a commandment in the Bible that says, Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needs not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Sometimes we make our own selves ashamed because we don't study the scripture. And I said before, if somebody comes up to you and says, Well, all the world, everybody loves Jesus, you look up to them right in the face, right to their nose, and say, You don't read and study your Bible. I read my psalm. Ha! Now I know you're really lying to me. And we're not going to be ashamed. Romans chapter 10 says, Whosoever believes on the Son, and somebody like that says, They shall not be ashamed. When I am walking the street of gold in New Jerusalem, there's no more shame. While somebody I witnessed to it utterly rejected Christ and God and salvation, burning in a darkness of hell. They'll be ashamed and even not ashamed. That rich man was not ashamed. For my sake, let not those that seek thee be confounded for my sake, O God of Israel. God, please don't let the unsaved use me as an excuse. And it's sorry that a lost man, and they will find anything. We are to abstain from all appearance of evil. Lord, please, 
let me live so not so good look how wonderful i am look how great i am no it's lord god let not the the lost people be able to say well god i didn't believe on you because because look at that christian there look what he does and if he can do it what can i do because for thy sake i have borne reproach and yeah anybody all they that live godly in christ jesus shall suffer persecution you're out there living for the lord and to do right they're not going to love you marvel not my brethren the world hates you know that it hated me first not everybody loves jesus and even the old testament david tells us if you're going to take a stand for christ they're going to try to kick you they're going to try to knock you down they're going to try to get a big bowling ball and knock you over like you're the kingpin they don't want you standing you have an enemy and how do you know you have an enemy when you take a stand with god god has given us an armor why would he give us armor if we're, we're not to fight shame has covered my face and going back to jesus verse 8 9 and 10 i have become a stranger unto my brother he came unto his own his own received him not an alien now watch this are you catholic watch this and an alien unto my mother's children jesus had brothers and sisters according to david it was prophesied david's mother mary would have children not nieces, not nephews, not uncles, not cousins, not Mary's children. And the Gospels gives us the names of them children. For the zeal, John 2, 17, of thy house, God's house, Matthew 21, 12, Mark 11, 15, Luke 19, 45, for thy house has eaten me up. And the reproaches of them that reproach thee are fallen upon me. God, those that blaspheme you. I think it was Paul that told the, the Jews, man, you're causing the Gentiles to blaspheme God. Everything that they did wrong in the name of God and the service of God, Jesus witnessed it and saw it and not from heaven. But as he walked and talked and lived on this earth for 33 and a half years. When I wept. And records twice in the Bible where Jesus wept. And chastened my soul with fasting. Jesus Christ on this planet, God manifested in the flesh. Fasted. It's funny, it's, it said we had a viewer, as soon as I mentioned Mary's children and all that, they went bye-bye. Guess they were Catholic. I'm teaching the truth. When you don't like the truth, you're angry with God and not me. There it is, black and white. When I wept and chastened my soul with fast, Jesus Christ fasted and prayed for the people. That was to my reproach. I made sackcloth also my garment. I became a proverb to them. Man, they were talking about Jesus left and right. They held counsels against Jesus. You know, it's funny. They, you always show a peach, Jesus, and, and which are not his pictures or anything. But, you know, he's got this white gown. There's a verse that says he was in sackcloth. I've never seen a picture of him in sackcloth. You imagine God manifested in the flesh, Almighty Jehovah God of Abraham, Isaac, Jesus. Can you imagine him wearing sackcloth? There it is. Sackcloth was in, was very uncomfortable. Poor man's clothes. They that sit in the gate, important people, the the the, the rulers and the, the the elite citizens of that city or town speak against me 
Have you got not the approach yet that Jesus Christ was hated? John writes at the end of this gospel, he says, listen, we can't write everything that happened about Jesus. There would be no end to the books. If Matthew, Mark, and John wrote everything about Jesus Christ, you'd be sitting in the pew at church and be like this. Okay, congregation, I want you to go out to the blue tractor trailer. I want you to go halfway through that truck. I want you to get this green book. Because you would have tractor trailers of books, of, of many pages of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John that we don't have. That was not recorded. There were more healings and there were more hatred against Jesus that wasn't recorded. I was so I was the song of drunkards. You realize there are songs out there on the radio that you can put I don't, to me it was a quarter, but I don't know what it is. You can put into the jukebox in a bar room and you can hear the words and name of Jesus being blasphemy today. I could when I grew up. I remember when I was in bars, you would hear a song mention Jesus. Bless me. Drunks would get a hold and, oh, Jesus, healed somebody today and got everybody all angry. But as for me, my prayer is unto thee, O Lord, in the acceptable time. You really think David saw Calvary's cross by what we just read? Do you even think David knew that he's talking about the Messiah? David's right, they had hated me without a cause. All right, for David, who that what would that be? Saul. Now, who would hate David with a cause? Ab uh, uh, Joab. Joab held the letter of Uriah. Bathsheba would be mad at the God. But there were people that were mad at, at David. And there was no reason to be mad at David. I'm trying to think of the one that cursed Shimei. Shimei was mad at David, but there was really no cause. It, now God may have sent him because David was a bloody man. Uriah, but not King Saul, as Shimei said. He said, I become a stranger unto my mother's brethren, verse 8. You know, David's own brothers rejected him. David shows up to the back. What are you doing here, naughty little boy? Why don't you go watch the little sheep? Go take care of the little sheep. David's writing about himself. And what David doesn't know, he's living the life of Jesus. Except for where he says, I'm a sinner. And when I said that, he says, I'm, you know my sins, verse 5. He ain't talking about Jesus. He's talking about David. People are getting drunk, verse 12, and had David. <laughs> oh, David, he's up on the run. Someone go tell Saul David's hiding over there. O oh God, in the multitude of thy mercy, hear me in truth of thy salvation. Now, that ain't Jesus. Jesus had all the mercy and grace and wisdom and power of God. David's like, I'm in trouble here. I got the whole world against me. I need help. Jesus said one time, I can call down legion, 12 legions of angels. It wouldn't have been the mercy upon Jesus, it'd be the mercy upon the people that God created. Deliver me out of the mire, he mentioned that in verse 2, and let me not sink. That's also a story of Jeremiah. Let me be delivered from them that hate me. Again, that's Jesus. But what if what if that was Jesus and God did deliver Jesus from them that hated him? He would not go to the cross, there would be no gospel, we'd be dying going to hell. Paul said, if there's no resurrection, eat, drink, and be merry, for tomorrow we die. So that's not Jesus. When Jesus is in the garden, he says, Lord God, let this cup pass from me. It's not death. Some preach that that is death. 
That was sin. Jesus finally realized what sin was really and what sin does and how sin makes you, how sin marks you. And Jesus, oh, we're really going to take that? I don't mind dying, God. We can do that. I'm coming up out of grave. But those sins, that wickedness that this creation does, and if that was Jesus, Deliver me from them that hate me. Jesus Christ would never went to the cross. He would have called down those 12 legions of angels and we would die and go to hell. That's David. Out of the deep waters. I'm in deep. I'm in deep. I'm in trouble. That's when people get the expression out of the Bible. I'm in deep. I'm over my head. Comes out of the Bible. Let not the water flood overflow me. Neither let the deep swallow me up, death, or trouble. Let not the pit shut up her mouth upon me. That's death. <coughs> Even so today, this is a bad smell in this neighborhood. People say, well, how are you doing, Stiley? Like, huh? I said, I'm like a bobber in the water. Sometimes I get taken under, but I pop right back up. What happens when you get taken over? I'm, over, I'm in over my head. I need God's help. Hear me, O oh Lord. Jesus cried on the cross, My God, my God, why has thou forsaken me? Hear me, O oh Lord, my for thy loving kindness is good. Yes, it is. Better than good. Great. Turn unto me according to the multitude of thy tender mercies. Hide not my face from thy servant. Jesus is called the servant of God. And God did hide his face from him. For I am in trouble. I don't think Jesus was in trouble. Jesus had the whole situation all in control. That's kind of half Jesus, half David. And that's the famous word of David through the psalm, trouble. Hear me speedily. Now that's not Jesus. Listen, Jesus Christ knew at the sun going down Passover day that he was going to die and he would give up the ghost. He's not going to pray to God deliver me. If he did and God did, there would be no salvation and no gospel. Draw nigh unto my soul and redeem it. That's not Jesus. That's me. Deliver me because of my enemies. Again, that's David. That's Jesus. Thou hast known my reproach and my shame and my dishonor. It could be Jesus. My adversaries are all before thee. Shame. I don't care how they paint the pictures. But Jesus Christ was stark naked on that cross. They spit it upon him. He had man spit all over him. Reproach Jesus has broken my heart. That he, the blood came. When he said that water and blood came out. They say that is a medical thing for a broken heart. When Christ died. And I am full of heaviness. In the, in the garden he prays as great drops of blood for his sweat. And I looked for some to take pity. And there was none. Peter, where are you? Peter? Judas? Matthew? Mark? Thaddeus? Where are you? Oh, hi, John. John, behold thy mother. Mother, behold thy son. Jesus said there was only one disciple there out of twelve. One was already dead. And for comforters, but I found none. I thirst. And they gave him vinegar. Really? They gave me also gall for my meat. There it is. 
And in my heart, they gave me vinegar to drink. Now, who is that? Who is that? Okay, come back over here, the guy that left us. I am become a stranger to my brethren. John 1, 11, I think it is. Came unto my own, and he received me not. And an alien unto my mother. Children. Bye. Didn't like the truth? You know as a Catholic, verse 21. That's sections of the cross, or I forget what they call it. Something of the cross. And they all got pictures of Christ all the way to the cross. You go for 21, but you won't go for that Mary was a professional virgin. She wasn't. She had children. Let their table, the enemies, become a snare, a trap before them. When Jesus is dying, the Bible records someone were sitting down eating, having a picnic. That's disgusting. Here are thieves and Jesus dying a, a virtual capital punishment crime. And there are people sitting there having a... Did you bring any sandwiches? Good. Uh, what kind of sandwich did you bring? You bring Kool-Aid? Probably some just sitting over there. I want my, want what my wife packed me for lunch today. And I got an egg salad sandwich. Can I trade my egg salad sandwich? What do you got? Caesar salad? Do I have that now? They sat down and watched Jesus die, and they're eating food, and they're casting lots, gambling for his clothes. All oh, the world loves Jesus. Shut up and read your Bible. And that which should have been for their welfare, Christ dying on that cross. Let it become a trap. Now, the impartable sin, Jesus says, if you bless, if you speak against the Holy Spirit, we don't have time to get into that. Woe to the people that saw Jesus die, saw him get, or heard about him getting entombed and sealed, and hearing about and maybe seeing his resurrected body, and all through that reject him. Now, I've never seen Jesus. I have never seen the entomb of Jesus. I have never physically seen the resurrection of Jesus. I did not see him ascend to the, the throne of God. But the Bible says, I am able to judge angels. Why? Because angels have saw God in the Son. I haven't, and I believe on God in the Son, and they went after the devil. There'll be Christians in the Philadelphia and Laodicean church ages that will judge Romans as we never we never saw nothing. What's the problem? Go to uh, the end of John. And Jesus tells Thomas this. Chapter 20 verse, let's see where I want to go. 28, good Jehovah Witness verse. We'll start there. And Thomas answered, said to him, My Lord and my God. Jesus says unto him, Thomas, because thou hast seen me, thou hast believed. Blessed are they that have not seen me, me, slightly, and yet have believed. Those who have not believed on Jesus and saw him will be judged by those who have believed on Jesus and hasn't seen him. I said, we're going to angels, we're going to judge angels. They have been in the presence of God and presence in the, the, the Holy Spirit and Jesus Christ. I have never been there. I have believed by faith. I have more faith than the angels. And God's going to say, okay, because you believe, you're going to judge those angels. Woe be to those people that actually witnessed the death, burial, and resurrection and had part of the death, burial, and resurrection. Listen, it's a story recorded in the gospel that, well, it was a recorded story that, you know, the disciples came and they stole the body of Jesus. They acknowledged the body was missing. They acknowledged the body was dead and missing. 500 people saw the resurrected Christ. And you're going to live through that, and you're going to reject Jesus Christ? 
as your Savior? And in 2020, a person is going to hear about it. He's going to believe and he's going to trust. And Jesus said, Thomas, wow, wait till those people come. The enemies of Christ are going, man, they're going to be judged by us. Let their eyes be darkened. You mean the one that healed blind eyes, that opened the eyes? Can you imagine if you were blind? Fanny Crosby, you imagine the day that she died to be absent with the body and looking at Jesus? Blinded how? When you go into hell, it's a dark place. There's no light. You say fire. There's no redness. There's no orangeness. There's no whiteness. There's no blueness. It's a pitch dark place that you go into. You're not going to see your friends. You can't even see your fingertips. And the one that suffered and died and bled for us is saying, if you don't believe on me and you reject me, not only do you go to hell, but you go get blind. That they said not, that they see not, and make their loins continually the shape. Can you imagine that? You imagine if you go into a place of hell and the Bible says tormented, torments, and tormenting. And can you imagine in hell you're, you you got anxiety and you're shaking. Oh, what am I going to do? Oh, I can't. Oh, my. Oh, what, what am I going to do? Give me my pills. There's no pills. Give me some alcohol. There's no alcohol. Help me. Help me. Oh, forever. You're going to suffer. Because you will not believe on Jesus Christ. You're not going to have your medication. You're not going to have your alcohol. You're not going to have relief. You're not going to be able to take a nap. David's showing us what Jesus would say and has said. In the places where John has written that there's so many things that Jesus done, it's not recorded. That's why you got to read the whole Bible. From Genesis to Revelation. The entire thing. Remember I said... Jesus was hating. Somebody comes up to you. Well, everybody loves Jesus. Look him in the face and say, you don't need to study your Bible. And believe me, I've done it. And if, I don't know how many times I've done it. I have not had anybody ever come back. Well, yes, I do. I've seen people put their head down and walk away. I don't do it to be mean. I don't do it to be cruel. I'm trying to do it. Hey, you need to wake up. I'd rather you wake up now with a Bible getting slapped across your face than you waking up in hell and verse 24 pour out thy indignation upon them what did John the Baptist say he that has the son has everlasting life he that has not the son shall not see life but the wrath of God abide abiding upon him Imagine the wrath of God coming. What are you doing? I'm coming to live inside you. See, you would not have the Holy Spirit live inside you through, through the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. But instead of the Holy Spirit, I'll give you the wrath. And you live in the wrath in hell, and the wrath lives in you in hell. Inside and outside of you. Indignation. Because you would not trust on Jesus Christ. You hated Jesus. Oh, I'm in religion. Whatever. I'm a religionist. I'm just going to say anything you're in. No, you hate Jesus. No, I don't. Yes, you do. You can't say you love. I love Jesus. Do you believe on him? Well, I no. Then you don't. Shut up. You don't. I've dealt with people. I've witnessed to people. And I've told people. Well, I'm good. You're better than Jesus then. When you state you're good, you think you're better than what Jesus done. So you're saying, I hate Jesus and I can do it myself. It's ridiculous. Verse 24, and let that, let thy wrathful anger, wrathful anger, isn't that two words that really, wrathful anger, take hold of them. Hell is not a party, my friend. And you need not to go. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Saved from what? The wrath of God. What's the wrath of God? It's hell. I don't care what your preacher teaches. 
He's trying to air condition hell because he's probably going there. Not every preacher is saved and going to heaven, my friend. Paul tells the Corinthians that the devil has ministers. You need to realize that hell is such a terrible place that Jesus said hell was created for the devil and his angels. Oh, by the way, I left my throne in heaven to come and suffer and die and to be buried and to be risen from the dead that you may escape hell because you can't do it yourself. And we're reading about what hell is like. And these are not the words of Jesus on the cross. What were the words of Jesus on the cross? Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. Where are these words spoken by Jesus Christ? When he's sitting on the great white throne of judgment and he says, depart from me, workers of iniquity, I never knew you. I don't care if you're a mother, I don't care if you're a son, I don't care if you're a co-worker, I don't care if you read a gospel tract. Somebody tried to tell you how to get saved and you rejected me. That's how serious it is. Let their habitation be desolate. Matthew 23, 38, Acts 1, 20. That's where Judas went. Desolate. Nothing. Empty. I'm going to go party with my friends. And you're going to a place of desolation. Your friends are not going to care you're there because they're not going to care that they're there. Matter of fact, you know what the rich man in hell said? Please go tell my family not to come. The rich man in hell said, do not RSVP my family to this place. And tell them not to come. Let none dwell in their tents, their homes. Wherever they live, just let it be desolate, let it fall down. Almost like Jericho. Just burn the city up, and then later it was rebuilt. Verse 26, we see Jesus again. For they persecuted him whom thou hast smitten. God smitten him, Isaiah 53. It pleased God to beat and smite Jesus. And they talked to and they talked to the grief of those whom thou hast wounded. They didn't tie Jesus with little ropes to the cross. They nailed him. They took a kind of nine tails and they ripped his back open. And it, I'm from New England and I've seen farmlands. And if you've been like Indiana and, and, and those places there, you've been in farmland. You know where they have plowed the ground. And the Bible describes the back of Jesus as furrows been plowed by a plower. Man, when they grab those kind of nine tails, bam, do it again. Give it to him more. Come on. Give it to him. Put this thing over Jesus' face. Who hit you, Jesus? Come on, tell me. Come on, do it again. And then the Roman soldiers, mighty men of army, went and had their fists put, put on Jesus. And they took that crown of thorns and they put it on his head and they bashed that, crown, that, th that thorn of crown into his head. Then they made him carry that cross, beaten, bloody. He carried his blood on the streets of Jerusalem to the hill of Calvary. And he laid down and they took the nails and they nailed him to that cross. It was no Sunday afternoon. That's the day of his resurrection. The Bible says you couldn't even tell that was a man up there. Why? Because I am a sinner. I am worthy of death. That should have been me on that cross. Jesus said, I will do it for you. Father, forgive him because he's believed on me and he's one of our children. Put the Holy Spirit, the comfort inside of him. He's one of ours. Thank you, Lord Jesus. What am I going to do to top what he's done? Listen, I sat one time in a dentist chair. And the Novocaine ran off. And I am not kidding you. And he's pulling my tube. The Novocaine ran. I stood out of that chair on my butt. And I grabbed that guy's face. And I hurt him. He's a Christian. 
I thank God for him. He's a missionary in Egypt. I had to apologize to God. He just like laughed at me. If I can't take a dentist pulling a tooth out of my mouth with, that, with Novocaine running, how on earth am I going to take the punishment of God for my sins? I take it upon Jesus Christ, my soul. I'll let Jesus Christ do it. I'll let God do it for me because I can't do it. I go crying to my pastor. I go crying to a doctor when I got an ear infection and it hurt. I can't do it. Only God can do it. And he did do it. Add iniquity unto their iniquity. Depart from me, workers of iniquity. I never knew you. And let them not come into thy righteousness. You know, really, I know God is Jesus. I know Jesus is God. But there's also that very fine line. Very fine. That's where Jehovah Witnesses get off. But you realize the lost man will never see God? No. And this is that fine. This is the part of the Trinity we can't explain. But who's on the great white throne judgment? Jesus. They're going to face Jesus. I can be very careful, but they're not going to face God. God is not. I don't want them in my sight. Son, you take care of it. I know Jesus is God. I know God is. But there's also that fine line. As Jesus said, even the Father doesn't know. I don't know. I mean, the Father knows. I don't know. Jehovah Witnesses love that one. And please, if, if, if I have downrated Jesus, I, I repent and I, I post the blood of Jesus Christ. I hope I did not do Jesus wrong, but there's that fine line. Iniquity upon iniquity. That's bad. And let them not come into thy righteousness. Don't stand in the presence of God. Let them be blotted out of the book of living. Revelation chapter 20. We got to go over there. Because we're at the great white throne judgment right now. You know that? We won't be there as Christians. Well, actually, we will be there. We're not going to be judged, but we're going to be there judging. Revelation 20, verse 15. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Okay, that's important. That's important. Come back over here to Psalms. Scripture with Scripture. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needs not to be ashamed, rightly divine the word of truth. Here we go. Ready? Let them be blotted out of the book of living. Can your name be blotted out of, out of the land's book of life? Yep, there it is. And let and not be written with the righteous. Whose names are in that land's book of life? The righteous name. My name is in that book. All those that are saved, all those that have done what God's told them to do for salvation in their time. Who's not in that book? All that rejected God and gave up on God. And when the books are open and their name is not in that book at the great white throne judgment, they go off in the lake of fire that burns forever. Again, not all people at the great white throne judgment are going to go in the lake of fire. If their name is in the book, then they go. They get the pass. But that's another study. I will praise the name of God. There's a name above all names that are given amongst men whereby you must be saved. I wonder what that name is. It's not Mary. With a song. What's our hymnal sing? All about Jesus. And we'll magnify him with thanksgiving. You ever thank God for your salvation? Ever thank God for praising, for, for answering prayer? Ever thank God just for saving your soul? Ever thank God just for thanking God, for thanking God? Paul says, rejoice evermore. This also shall please the Lord. What? Thanking and singing to God. That pleases God. God, how can I make you happy today? Just sing. Oh, Lord, I can't sing. Go ahead. No one's listening. Just thank me for something today. That's what I try to do on my Facebook every day. I like to do a thank you or a praise of God. Just say, God, thank you. And I want to tell everybody I know on Facebook, God, you answered my prayers. Lord, you're taking care of me. That's why I do it. For the honor of God. Verse 31, this also shall be pleased to the Lord better than ox, bullocks that have horns or hoofs. The sacrifices. 
not the blood of rams or goats. God, well, I'll tell you what, I will sacrifice my whole herd of sheep. I don't want you sheep. Well, what do you want? I want you to praise me. I want you to thank me. I want you to pray to me. I want you to ask me. I want you to treat me like like I'm your like I'm your father and you're my son. I want you to reverence me. That's what I want. God, I'll give you all my money. That's okay. The widow only brought two mites. That was all her money. I was pleased. Everybody else brought their abundance. Stop bringing your abundance and bring you. Bring yourself. Come, thank me, and I'll be pleased. I want you to say thank you. I want you to say, oh, look what God's done to me. I want you to tell others, this is what Jesus done to save my soul. Please, can I tell you how Jesus, can? that's what pleases the Father. The humble shall see this. See what? You praising God. And be glad. Your heart shall live that seek God. You want to live? Seek God. He that has the Son has everlasting life. There you go. Others are going to see. Man, why is that guy just so happy? That guy's miserable, you know? That guy, he's got bills and... Not making up, he's making the same check. I am. Man, he comes in happy, he comes in singing. He, I think he says something about joy, joy, something like that. And the Bible, I don't know, Jesus, that guy hates me, but he's got something I ain't got. You ever been somewhere and they don't know you and they walk up to you and say, you know, something about you? I don't know what. I had people come up to the store, right? The store is busy. And they come up to me, I don't know how they know. They say, is that your car out there in the parking lot with all the bumper stickers? Yeah. How'd you know it was me? That happens to me all the time. Is that you with all those bumper stickers? Well, praise the Lord. I'm like, yeah, praise the Lord. I'm like, how'd you know it was me? There's a bunch of people in this store, and you, it's got to be that part that people say, that's got to be the Christian. That's got to be the one. He's got that smile. That's what it is. And the humble will see it. For the Lord heareth the poor. Thank you, Lord. That's humble. That's not pride. Pride's a sin. Lord, I don't have nothing. I just went grocery shopping today. I, the whole house is filled with food and stuff. I'm poor. Wait a minute. The whole house is full. The refrigerator. You can't even look in the refrigerator. Because without God, I'd be broke. I would have nothing. God's the one that filled the refrigerator. God's the one I'm looking at the pantry saying, wow, look at all those canned goods. God's the one, look at, look at everything. God's the one, do you see? You can't see my stomach. You see how fat I am? They're saying I'm losing weight. You know why I'm fat? Because God blessed me. God has blessed me with riches of food. God has blessed me with two wives that took care of me and fed me well. See, I'm not well fed by the government. I'm well fed by God. There's a big difference. There's a big difference. And despises not his prisoners. There are men who go on to prison because of the word of God. And I've been in the prison ministry I don't know how many years. You know what the number one group of people that I can get my, myself to hold up and deal with? I don't go in prison now because it's worldly. The men in prison. I've got more men who have received Christ as their Savior. I've got more men that came back to Christ. I have more men in prison that got rid of their perverted Bibles and came to a King James Bible. I've got a son that's in a prison ministry today. God will take care of those who've been put in prison. And some of you know it's true. You're put in prison by the Word of God. Peter, James, John, Paul were all put in prison for the word of God. Sometimes God's going to do that to get your intention. Let the heaven and the earth praise him. The seas and everything that moveth therein. I think the Bible says in the book of Revelation, the angel's going to go uh, with, uh, I forget what kind of gospel. It says even the, the, the animals in the sea are going to praise God. Say hallelujah. People ain't praising God through this coronavirus. You know what? You know what they're doing? They're shutting down churches. 
That's not praising God. Well, you know, I got troubles. I got problems. I, got anxiety. I have no toilet paper. I have no Lysol. Oh, man, everything's got, they're closed and everything. Uh, maybe I'll go run to a church. Uh, oh, no, it's closed. Maybe I'll go run to a church. Uh, the doors are locked. Uh, uh. That's frightening. That if somebody were to go try to find God, the church doors are closed. And yet in Revelation, the Bible says Jesus stands at the door and knocks. Maybe he's knocking in the last scene church. Maybe he's knocking on the church door, then closed, shut up, and locked. I've been thinking about that. For God will save Zion, Jerusalem, and he will, the second advent, and will build the cities of Judah, he will, second advent, millennium, that they may dwell there, the Jews. And have it in possession. That land of Israel will not belong to P.O.O. no longer. It will not belong to the Jordanians. It will not belong to the United Nations. Jesus Christ will come as Moses and Joshua came in and crossed that Jordan River. And go into the promised land and say, here, this is your land. This is my land. From the Jordan to the Mediterranean Sea. See, America's got it wrong. God says, that's my land, that's the land I look upon, and it belongs to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and Jesus Christ, the King of kings, the Lord of lords, is going to bring the Jews into that land and say, it's yours. How do you like it, Abraham? How do you like it, David? He's going to put them all back and put them in that land. Glory to God. That they may dwell there and have possession. The seed also of his servants shall inherit he came on to his own Jewish people. They're going to have babies in the millennium. They're going to grow up seeing Jesus Christ. Thomas, blessed are they that have seen me, like you, and those in the millennium who are going to see the physical, living Jesus Christ, King of the Jews. There you go. And they that love his name shall dwell therein. Nothing but the name of Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. There is no other name but the name of Jesus. There is no other Savior but Jesus. Jesus is coming. I don't know when, but I, I think it's soon. Now, if you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, that ain't going to prevent you from coronavirus. You may still get it. But maybe he won't. Let you get it. He may, may not. But I'll tell you one thing. If you're to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved is if you die without Jesus Christ, you go to hell. I know you haven't heard that in a long time. You may even heard Hades. Well, go to work tomorrow and say, hey, guys, go to Hades. And listen to him laugh at you. Do they know Hades is not hell? why they tell you to go there. And if you don't believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, you will go to hell. I don't care what anybody said. This is what the Bible says. That Jesus Christ is the only mean. That he suffered and died according to the scripture. And he was buried. And he arose again the third day according to the scripture. That is life. And if you reject Jesus Christ, Jesus said in his own words, he'll reject you. Depart from me, ye workers of iniquity. I never knew you. And what's the old expression? It's not what you know. Well, I know the whole Bible. I've got doctors and degrees. I know what this, this religion does. I know what that religion does. I know what this is. I know how to break down nuclear atoms. I know how to pilot an airplane. I know how to... It's not what you know. Isn't it who you know? You know who I know? I know that Jesus Christ saved my soul. April 21st, 1987. He took a wicked, vile sin, and you wouldn't even want to know what sins I was vowed in. And he saved my soul. And he cleaned up this soul. I gave up the liquor first. I gave up the smoking. Not to be saved, but that Christ can use me after I was saved. Don't try to clean nothing up to, to go to heaven. You're not going to clean yourself up enough. 
For if you want to be clean to get to heaven, for with the heart man believes unto righteousness, with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Whosoever believeth on Jesus shall not be made ashamed. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. We thank you for listening to the Hayward Family Ministries, and we we'll try to be here seven, seven o'clock every night, except for my church nights, which is Sunday and Wednesday night. We have a study on Tuesday about uh, the biblical, biblical truth of our hymns. That's in the afternoon. We have a study we're going through Thursday uh, afternoons. Evil, the word evil in the Bible. I've got coming up an Easter. An Easter sermon coming up on how Easter is not Christian. It is pagan. And it is a sin. But well, that will be coming up next week or Lord willing the week after that. But we thank you for coming. Tell your friends, say, hey, listen to this guy yell at you. Listen to this guy rant about the Bible. Listen about this guy who Catholics turn you off. Hey, this guy, share, like. Help us get this ministry out. Help us lift up Jesus. Not me. Lift up Jesus. I don't think I mentioned my name. You don't need to know my name. You need to know the name of Jesus Christ. Glory to Jesus. When we get to heaven, we'll, we'll worship and praise and sing to Jesus. I even get a brand new name, so you don't need to know my name. Glory to God. Thank you very much. Have a good day.